Well, good morning and happy Sunday to all. Please join in song with us as we sing this morning, It Works When I Work It. It works when I work it, my good comes pouring through. It works when I work it, these principles are true. It works when I work it, my joy is multiplied. Everything I ask, receive, everything I find. Everyone who asks, receives, every seeker finds. I know that I am ready to receive the many blessings pouring down on me. Loving and releasing that little voice of doubt that says that I'm not good enough and that I must do without cause I know that it works when I work it my good comes pouring through it works when I work it these principles are true it works when I work it my joy is a multiplying everyone who asks receives Every seeker finds, everyone who asks receives, every seeker finds. We have to have a dream before a dream comes true. If I trust my heart to lead, then love comes pouring through. Like an old friend of mine, my good will know my face. I'm making room for miracles and saving room for grace cause I know that it works when I work it my good comes pouring through and it works when I work it these principles are true it works when I work it my joy is a multiplier everyone who asks receives Every seeker finds, everyone who asks receives, every seeker finds. Yes, that is true. So today is the first Sunday of a new month. We're in March already. Can you believe that? So we like to always acknowledge birthdays. So if you don't have a birthday during the month of March, we want you to sing to those who do have birthdays during this month. So let's sing together. Happy birthday to these wonderful folks. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, you are wonderful. Happy birthday to you. God is blessing you now. God is blessing you now. God is blessing you. You are wonderful. Happy birthday to you. And many more. morning and welcome to Unity of Daytona Beach on this glorious beautiful day here locally. You may be tuning in from around the country and I hope it's a beautiful glorious day there too for you. You may have noticed we're putting names up for the birthdays now. If you had a March birthday, have a March birthday and it was not there, please notify the church office so we can add you and then celebrate April and May and all the other months of the year. We're going to start with the daily word today. I'm going to use yesterday's daily word because it really spoke to me. And the word was yes. Please speak this affirmation with me. I say yes to life and new possibilities. My world opens up when I say yes to life, to love, and to new experiences. My mind and soul expand as I welcome new people new learning and new horizons. 
I view new opportunities as a way to express my optimistic nature. I have the courage to say yes to new things. I am eager to try new ways of doing and being. I look beyond all apparent obstacles to find the blessings, no matter what, how small or insignificant they may seem. Knowing that saying yes infuses situations with hopeful energy and positive expectancy. Saying yes gives me abundant opportunities to shine my light, your light in this world. As I give of myself, my gifts and talents, I am sharing the unique expression of my divinity, of our divinity. I am making the world a brighter place when we say yes to life. This reading is inspired by Psalm 119.32. I run the way of your commandments, for you enlarge my understanding. Please close your eyes with me for a minute. <sighs> what is calling you to say yes to right here and right now? Maybe it's a new adventure, a new career opportunity, or maybe it's just needing more time of silence and stillness. Whatever that little inner voice is calling you to say yes and see what happens. We are now in the presence of pure being and immersed in the Holy Spirit of life, love, and wisdom. We acknowledge your presence and power, O blessed spirit. In your divine wisdom, erase our every human limitation and from the pure substance of your love, bring into manifestation our world according to your perfect law, and because we align with it and cooperate with that law, and so it is. We have a few announcements today. Oh, first statement of faith. <laughs> there is only, oh, sorry. <laughs> Missed that part too. Lord's Prayer. <clears throat> Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And leave us not in temptation, but deliver us from error. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Make me some room close by your side, love is drawn to love. Here in this place, hearts open wide, love is drawn to love. We'll find that song, sing it together, love is drawn to love. With harmony, everything's better, love is drawn to love. Love is drawn to love, love is drawn to love, 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 oh, love is drawn to love, love is drawn to love, love is drawn to love, 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 oh, love is drawn to love. Stand up for truth, lift up your voices, love is drawn to love. Follow your heart, you see the choices, love is drawn to love. Love is drawn to love, love is drawn to love. Love, love, oh love is drawn to love. Love is drawn to love, love is drawn to love, 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 oh love is drawn to love, 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 oh love is drawn to love, love is drawn to love. Love is drawn to love.
Good morning again. Love is drawn to love. When we are love, we receive more love. Please speak our statement of faith with me. There is only one presence and one power in the universe and in my life. God the good omnipotence. We have a few announcements that I'll come back to you today since I tried to jump on that a little too early last time. Don't forget next week is the time change, so we spring ahead. We lose an hour sleep in the middle of the night from Saturday to Sunday. And save the date because we will be having some sort of Easter gathering, fun and blessings on March 27th from 1 to 3 p.m. So mark your calendar now and details will come out in the near future. And membership renewal time. So you will get this in the mail or maybe have already received this little green piece of paper in the mail. In accordance to our unity bylaws, we do this every year to renew your membership. If you've received it, please drop it back in the mail to us or drop it by the church office. We'd love to hear from you, so let us know that you got it and we will receive it with open hearts. And we will do our rededication on Sunday, March 27th, when we receive all of these back. Thank you so much. Let the light within you shine, we are all connected. Look into another's eyes, see your light reflected. Let the light within you shine, we are all connected. Look into another's eyes, see your light reflected. We are one light, shining souls in harmony. We are one light, shining in Shining souls in harmony, we are one light shining in unity. We are one light shining souls in harmony. We Shining in unity. Let's just take a moment and come into the stillness. We are one light. Just take a deep breath and take that in. We are one light, shining in unity. If you're willing and comfortable, close your eyes with me. And let's take those three deep breaths together, each time relaxing a little bit more and settling in. Take a deep breath in and let it out with a big sigh. And just let everything relax. Another deep breath in. And as you exhale, stilling the mind and getting quiet. One more deep breath in, feeling everything just let go. Starting to focus on the breath. Letting the thoughts start to slow down. Knowing that the thoughts will come and they will go, but visualizing them like clouds in the sky, just floating across with no attachment. 
We're gonna tap into that inner wisdom, that inner light today. So settle into your heart center, opening up your heart, listening for that wisdom that comes in. Is there something that you need some inner guidance about today? Maybe a challenge in your life, maybe a relationship that's not serving you or needs to be spoken about. Maybe it's an adventure, something you want to do. Just take a moment and see what comes in. Now let's take that and know that we have the inner wisdom. God has prepared us for everything. So let's take a minute in the silence and see what the inner wisdom tells us about that question, challenge, situation, whatever it might be. Settling the thoughts as much as we can. And gently coming back. Maybe you received an answer and maybe you didn't. Maybe more time and the silence will serve you at this time. Either way, it's all in God's divine plan. And so it is. You are a work of heart, a brilliant light for all to see, perfect in every part, heaven and earth in harmony. The beauty of your face reveals a life of grace. You are a work of heart, a masterpiece. You are a work of heart, a brilliant light for all to see, perfect in every part, heaven and earth in harmony. The beauty of your face reveals a life of grace. You are a work of heart, a masterpiece. I am a work of heart, a brilliant light for all to see, perfect in every part, heaven and earth in harmony. The beauty of my face reveals a life of grace. I am a work of heart, a masterpiece. We are a work of heart, a brilliant light for all to see, perfect in every part, heaven and earth in harmony. The beauty of our face reveals a life of grace. We are a work of heart, a masterpiece. We are a work of heart, a masterpiece.
morning and welcome. I just kind of wanted to dance a little with that music. I, I hope you did too. So welcome, welcome. And before we begin this morning, I just want to say that song that our music team did just a minute ago, Work of Heart. I want to tell you how many hearts are working here together this morning, giving generously so that we can do this and share this with all of you, and how grateful we are that you have chosen to be here with us this morning. So all these magnificent hearts that are here, we've got Dr. Becky, we have Donna Miller, we have Ken Reed, that's our music team. We thank you all. Jeannie back there making the slides and everything wonderful. We got Dre over here making sure Facebook Live, he just did this. He gave you that in case you want to know. He's checked in. So we got one of our board members, Lisa Lemons here, who shared platform with me this morning and blessed us with a meditation. We have Deborah Bedard and Judy Cordo out there holding sacred space for us. And we have another board member over at the laptop receiving your comments and sending out blessings to you, our wonderful Carol Grog. So indeed, friends, we have works of heart here sharing with you this morning. And we feel that coming back from you as well. We are so blessed so grateful and I also want to just thank Unity Worldwide Ministries for providing that video for us this morning here of wisdom so here we are friends whisper words of wisdom welcome to March I'm loving it I'm starting to feel that springtime spirit how about you when I came in this morning and the music team was over here practicing I said you aren't gonna be able to stand me I'm so excited I can't stand myself I said, one of my patients used to say, if I was any better, I would be twins. So I have no idea exactly what that means, but I said that to them. If I was any better, I'd be twins today. So thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> and next Sunday is our time change. Like we said, daylight savings time begins. And I love it when it starts to stay light longer in the evenings. All part of this feeling that seems to energize me. And if that's not enough... Here we are, friends, the magical month of March, which begins Holy Week, with beginning with Palm Sunday on March 28th, the last Sunday of this month. So any of you who know me, you know that I absolutely love springtime, I absolutely love Holy Week, and I absolutely love Easter. It just enlivens me. I don't happen to know the why of all of it, and I'm not even asking. I'm just going to keep on feeling it and just enjoying all of that. So, and I'm just going to say, hey, thank you, God, right? Thank you, God. So if you're willing to, give me a woot woot. Give me a woot woot. Yes. <laughs> so I hope how I'm feeling is contagious, absolutely contagious. I want to say out with COVID and in with the fullness of life. Can I get an amen? Amen. So <laughs> thank you all. All right, let's breathe now. Whoo! Whisper words of wisdom. Whisper words of wisdom. Today we are beginning a three week series on the power of wisdom. And let me just first tell you all that as I was thinking about this, I thought, huh, I would just love it. If all I needed was three weeks to embrace fully the gift of wisdom, <laughs> that's just like me, right? I'm like, a, let me just cross that off my to-do list. <laughs> but here's what I know, friends, not so. What I know about our soul's journey is that it's an evolution. It's not a destination. It's not a place for us to arrive to. It's simply this great ongoing and that is a gift. So breathe in that gift with me right there. And maybe some of you already knew that early on, but I have to tell you, it took me a little while to end my spiritual evolution, my spiritual awakening, to not want it to be an arrival, to settle into and in the realization of knowing that indeed it's a destination. And for that, that's some wisdom for me. How about you? <laughs> And indeed, wisdom is one of our spiritual attributes or qualities that makes up our entire spiritual identity, that Christ consciousness that you hear us speak about often here. Charles Fillmore, Unity's co-founder, calls it one of the 12 powers. And as you've been hearing me say since January, that this is indeed the theme of Unity Worldwide Ministries. That's what they've chosen for 2021 
entitled How to Stay Centered No Matter What. And they're saying, how do we do that? We do that by calling forth and calling on all of our spiritual attributes, all of our spiritual qualities, because they're just here waiting for us all the time. And friends, and that is truth. That is the truth, that they're always available to us. And that means that it's a spiritual law, that it's unchanging, always readily available, always equally present for us. That's truth unchanging but what does change these outer circumstances these world the world changes doesn't it and here's another truth all worldly conditions whatever's going on all worldly conditions have a spiritual solution so if we can remember nothing else in those times of crisis or those times where we're being called up in life no even if you don't know what it is just yet, but know there is a spiritual solution to that. This quality of wisdom is also thought of as judgment, the ability to judge, evaluate, to discern, to be wise, to appraise, and to apply what is known. And I like that part where it says, what is known? What I like about that, it's not just what my mind wants to think, but it's what is known. There's a big difference there, isn't it? Because often our minds think and judge all the time. That's what they do. And sometimes we're using wisdom and sometimes we're not, right? Furthermore, our, su our thoughts are subject to the outer conditions. Of course they are because it's what we're taking in with our physical sight, with what we think we hear with our ears, all those types of things. All five senses are involved in that, and we are to use them. But it's our choice to use wise judgment to discern what we will anchor ourselves to or not. Some circles call that the wisdom to know the difference. Well, Charles Fillmore says this about wisdom that it is an intuitive knowing, a spiritual intuition, the voice of God within. The voice of God within. That is our source of our understanding. The mental action based on the Christ truth within. Wisdom includes judgment, discrimination, intuition, and all the departments of mind that come under the head of knowing. This knowing capacity, I like this part, transcends intellectual knowledge. Knowing transcends intellectual knowledge. Because spiritual discernment always places wisdom above the other faculties of mind and reveals that knowledge and intelligence are auxiliary to understanding. You've heard this before. My best thinking got me here. We've heard that, haven't we? <laughs> Meaning that thinking and intelligence is secondary to spiritual judgment, discernment, understanding, and wisdom. And they both can work together very well under the guidance of spirit. This knowing Charles is referring to is what we have experienced, I believe, whether we call it this or not, we've all had some of it. We might call it a hunch. We might say, hey, I just, I just felt it. <clears throat> Excuse me. I just knew it. And maybe in those times we passed it off as our intellect guiding us. So I just invite you for a minute to recall a time when you had that, when you had that hunch, that knowing, that sense. And what it felt like, <clears throat> excuse me, in that moment to experience that. And to perhaps just take a brief pause in the days to come when you have that feeling again and just try to notice, just try to notice that maybe what was really working there was not just your intellect, but indeed your spiritual wisdom, your discernment. Your inner wisdom always whispering to you, lining up your next right actions, our knowing. So I invite you, just, just begin to notice. Make it fun for yourself. 
Just start to notice. Maybe even keep a, a little journal or a little log of it if you choose as we proceed in this three-week series. Just for yourself, it's for you. Fillmore also shares in the revealing word that judgment or wisdom is a faculty of the mind that can be exercised in two ways, from sense perception or spiritual understanding. And we know this, that if all we're doing is basing it on our sense perceptions, outer world, its conclusions are often fallible and often condemnatory. But, in based, but if based in spiritual understanding, using wisdom or judgment, we're pretty safe in what the outcomes are. Unity Minister Reverend Paul Hasselbeck, in his book, Power Up, says that judgment and wisdom, when used from an elevated consciousness, is linked with love, understanding, and will. And we've said this here before at Unity, and this is a truth. All 12 powers work together. All work together. But particularly in wisdom and judgment, it's, it's also anchored in love, understanding, and will. This type of consciousness uses truth, principles, and laws that are divine in nature. And we use that wisdom to discern how to apply what we know in order to be the best, they say, the best person, the best Christ that we can be. When we're using simply just the qualities based on our senses, that's ego. And we're familiar with that, aren't we? We know what that ego, that acronym for ego stands for, that E-G-O edging God out. Because when we're based strictly in sense perception, that's what we're doing. We haven't invited in our spiritual faculties. We're just out here going, hey, I got this. I can do this of my own physicalness. But Hasselbeck says, underdeveloped wisdom, when we're working strictly from that ego, results in a person who cannot make decisions, is indecisive, and perhaps cannot discern good from bad. In addition, Overdeveloped wisdom or judgment results in a person, this is still just based in ego, results in a person who is highly judgmental, not any of us, right? No. <laughs> highly judgmental, discriminatory, or shrewd. This person might be overly picky about details and always finding fault with results. Oh, I'm going to go, oh, no thanks, huh? We've all done some of this, haven't we? It's okay. We're just raising our awareness. So here's a story for you from the book called Real Love by Greg Bauer. Sorry, Bear. Suppose you're having a Sunday brunch with a beloved sitting out by the pool of a five-star restaurant. It is, it is a most glorious day and the most glorious moment. You're having such an amazing time. You're a little distance away from the pool, and there are some lounge chairs between you and the pool. Suddenly, you get slightly splashed coming from the direction of the pool. You're a little irritated, but hey, no worries. You aren't going to let anything destroy your beautiful time. Then another large splash comes at you and gets your shoes wet. Not just your shoes, your best pair of shoes wet. <laughs> How are we feeling now? Yeah, you're a little more irritated. And apparently, you're a little bit more irritated at that individual that's apparently oblivious and perhaps an irresponsible person in the pool. But again, you vow not to let someone else's inconsideration mess with your perfect day. Next comes what feels like a tsunami, and you are really, you really got soaked with the water. Well, your patience now runs out, and you are angry. You're not just a little angry. You're really, really angry. So you stand up to give this inconsiderate so-and-so a piece of your mind. And as you stand up, what do you see? That person in the pool is drowning. 
is drowning. Obviously, this story demonstrates acting simply from sense consciousness. And certainly, there is nothing wrong with planning a special day and wanting it to go well. However, I do believe that it is ours to know with wisdom that we can respond to a situation simply rather than just reacting. And that it is ours to know that we indeed can respond to people, places, and things. That is a choice that we have. How different that must have felt, huh? And haven't we all been in some of those places before when we just thought, mm, I am just going to, mm, only to find out that what we thought we saw was completely not the case, completely not the same picture. We've all had them. We've misjudged a situation. We've misjudged a conversation, someone else's actions. Of course we have. We're human. And there's no perfection in any of this. Our spiritual journey is not about perfection. It is about realizing the perfection that we are from our Christed being, absolutely. But there is no shame, no blame, and no guilt. Not in any of this. There is no presence of love or wisdom when we immerse ourselves or others, and I say immersed even just a little bit, of guilt, shame, or blame. So take a breath with me. Release it. And stop all that. Stop it. It's just that easy. Because we're awakening, right? A dear friend of mine used to say, we are tuned in, tapped into, and turned on to the presence of the Christ within us. That's what we're doing here. But be aware of that. Be aware of that shame, blame, and guilt. Be aware of it whether you're doing it to yourself or you're doing it to others. And then just catch it. Just catch it. Just notice it. And realign. And then also use your wisdom to prayerfully ask Spirit, what's really going on? What's really going on here? And what is mine to learn and know from this circumstance? Bear goes on further to share that what he, call, he calls as a fundamental truth when anyone acts out in any way, no matter how hurtful it may seem to be, they are drowning. They're drowning for love, they're drowning for connection, and they're drowning for care. I dare say that is righteous judgment and wisdom. So you know what happens. We ministers study all this stuff and then it shows up in our life. So here it comes. <laughs> This is like a big confessional booth up here for the minister. I want you to know that, right? <laughs> is that why I was raised Catholic initially? I don't know. But anyway, here it is. I had an interaction last week that, allowed, that I allowed to upset me, or at least I thought in the moment that's what was happening. It was a miscommunication about an appointment time. And I allowed the calm peace of my soul to be disturbed by that. <laughs> Can you imagine? <laughs> and I'm confessing right here with two board members present. Yep, that's what I did. It was a morning appointment, so I thought I went in spiritually fit. I've prayed already. I've had my meditation time. I got my God self going on. But when I met with opposition, or at least opposition I perceived, I internally began to feel anxious, upset, here it comes, friends. Really, what? In truth, I wanted to be right. <laughs> and don't you love that when you say, do you want to be happy or do you want to be right? And you'll say, exactly. Somebody said both, yes. But what's happening, friends? And I only noticed this as I, w as I was preparing this. I said, I wanted to be, ha be right. So you know what that meant? I wanted them to be wrong. <laughs> we like to leave that part off, don't we? Oh, goodness gracious. I wanted my appointment time to go my way. Now, 
I wanted to regain my sense of calm, centered and to be in the divine flow. I wanted my faculty of wisdom to come charging in on a white horse. Whoosh, save me. No, no white horse, not even a small little donkey showing up for me. No, 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 no. There I was with all of it inside of me, making some choices. Now on the outside, I look okay, but you know what's going on up here? <laughs> it's just having a party up here. And it's not a very nice party, I might say. <laughs> and you know what gets me, friends, on, on this, this life lesson that we're in? The big stuff is easier to see, I think, at times. But it's some of this little stuff that just really packs the spiritual wallop for me. Anybody else? Can I get an amen? <laughs> and then what happens? I just don't think at one time. Zzz. You know, it's like a fishing reel. That, and it just goes, wee! And all that, abs I'm, I'm replaying it. Well, you know, that's what they told me my appointment time was. I don't know what they're thinking about. You know, on and on and on it went. Just a little bit of obsessive thinking. I'm not, I'm not even still in the location now. I'm in my car driving. And it's still carrying on. Yep. And I'm saying, wisdom. Wisdom, where are you? Where are you? <laughs> Come on back here. <laughs> Come alive. Come forth. Bring me some clarity. Bring me some serenity. Bring me my certainty that I'm looking for. That's a whole nother lesson. <laughs> Where was my discernment? Where was my right judgment? Where was my intuitive knowledge? I wanted to do better. I wanted to stand in my power. And at that point, mostly power over my own thinking and leave all the rest of that behind. And it just wasn't coming forth for me. And again, I'm talking to I'm driving and talking to myself in the car, saying, girl, what's up with you? And right behind that, what happens for me? Then I start to get agitated with myself. It's enough that I've got the situation over there about the appointment to deal with. And now, I'm aggravated with myself. Hmm. None of which was helpful, I might add. But it happens, doesn't it? It happens all the time. I can't be the only one. I'm thinking not. <laughs> In case you're wondering, this is how not to do it. <laughs> Don't take any notes on anything I just said to you. Now start to take notes. What did I do? I woke up a little, so I went home and got quiet. And Charles Fillmore says this. He said, call on one of your spiritual qualities or faculties to mentally, to rec to mentally, mentally to recognize that power, to identify it, and to align with it. And that's exactly what I did. I went home, got quiet, and I asked. Divine wisdom, what is mine to know in this? What's really going on here? If we know it's not about that appointment time. Bring me to right judgment. Open my mind. Because, you know, we get that way. Don't we get constricted? I get real small. I get constricted in my thinking. And I'm looking for expansion. I'm looking for expansion. But me of myself and my personality and my ego, I can't do it on my own because I'm locked in over there to wanting to be right, making somebody else wrong. I need that Christ in me, that faculty of that wisdom in me to come forth, let it rise up in me that I can see from that place, that I can discern with clarity. What is all of this dis-ease really about? that I can affirm that one presence and that one power. Instead of noticing what had I given my power away to completely in those moments before. Well, in this booklet entitled How to Stay Centered No Matter What, Unity Minister Reverend Colbert shares this on wisdom. And she's referring to Charles Fillmore's book, The Twelve Powers of Man, and says, 
that rereading his words helped me open my consciousness to the wisdom right around me. So from Pramahansa Yogananda, and I love this. Here's the quote. Steer the ship of concentration calmly to the shores of blessedness. Steer the ship. Breathe that in. That's what I was looking for. Colbert adds, stuck on my mirror was a card from teacher Edwin Gaines. Here's, this is from Edwin. I act on the guidance, intuition, good impulses, and inspiration that I receive. And from Dr. Emily Cady's book, Lessons in Truth, God is in everything that happens to you. God is in everything that happens to you. There are no second causes. Breathe that in. That's a biggie. One presence, one power. God in everything. And as I sat with these truths and dwelled upon them, I repeated, every life experience blesses me. I felt a shift, a welcome, a letting go. Wisdom is in the midst of us. Then she asked, who do I know who demonstrates calm, unwavering wisdom, despite circumstances, and what does that look like? And that's where I went to, friends. Once I became quiet, got myself together, remembering to go in, to ask, to discern, I could once again hear that voice of God. Then. That voice is one of love, of gentleness, and it's actually more of a knowing than an actual voice, perhaps, that we call, what we would call a voice. And so I reached out to my prayer partner to have a real heart-to-heart -heart about the source of my dis-ease that day. What was really causing my turbulence? I did, and thankfully she was available. You see, friends, God is so good all the time. The universe loves me, supports me, nurtures me, and wants me to succeed. That's another affirmation from Edwin Gaines. And that's the very same for all of us. There's no exclusion. That's all of us. My real issue had to do with a meeting that I had had the day before that I thought had no real effect on me. Hmm. <laughs> well, it did. And I was able to process it after I had that time with my prayer partner and a little more time in prayer and meditation. And I had that realization. Sometimes, friends, we don't always know the effect things are having on us at the time, do we? But what we can count on is that it is showing back up to bless us in some way. And the truth is, what had happened in that previous meeting for me is I bought into unknowingly, I bought into something that somebody else shared, and what happened? There was a little crack in the door of what? Fear. And I didn't realize it. I didn't realize it. In a millisecond, can't we make it all about us? <laughs> yes, we can. And that's okay. We're just staying awake now. But let us remember, here's some amazing news, and whatever visualization this gives you, let us remember that we live in an amplified field of infinite possibilities. I can just hear Reverend Carmen saying that. We live in a field, an amplified field of infinite possibilities all the time. All the time. You can make a note of that. That's worth repeating, worth writing down, worth looking at every day. So what do you believe is possible? What do you believe is possible for you this day? In Scripture from James chapter 1, verse 5, it says, If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask God, who gives to all generously, without reproaching, and it will be given. Ask, and it will be given. The gift of wisdom is here for us. 
We absolutely are in that field. There is wisdom in the midst of us, wisdom all around us, wisdom within us. Breathe. Oh, take, a, take a deep breath. I'm going to invite you now just to close your eyes for a minute. And we're going to get still. We're going to take a couple of breaths. And as we inhale, I'm going to ask you just to hold your breath for a second. So let's inhale. Hold that breath. Release it. We're going to do it two more times. Inhale. Hold your breath. Release. One more time. Inhale. Hold your breath. And release that breath. The color that represents wisdom is yellow. Yellow. So see your body filled with that color yellow. Like the sun shining brightly. And that physical location in the body where wisdom is represented is in the solar plexus region, in your midriff area. So you can place your hand right there now if you want to and just breathe into that area. In that sea of wisdom, notice the brightest color of yellow you've ever seen before. Ever seen before. Breathe into it. Feel that wisdom radiating throughout your entire body. Your entire body. See yourself bathed in that divine wisdom and affirm with me I am wise. I know what to do and I do it. I claim wisdom in all of my thoughts, in all of my decisions, in all of my interactions. Wisdom is my true nature. Take a breath in with me. Hold your breath. Release that breath. Say it boldly. Say it courageously. I claim my wisdom now. I claim my wisdom now. I invite you to come back with me. And we'll take another breath together. Release your breath. Friends, I invite you, if you choose, practice this visualization through these next weeks together. Take it into your prayer and meditation time. And allow that wisdom, your divine inheritance, to radiate through you and from you. Let us together as this spiritual community use spiritual discernment, right judgment, and wisdom in all of our interactions. First with ourselves, always let it begin with me, with you. First always with ourselves, then our families, our friends, and all others. And so think about that with me for just a minute. What would life look like if in thought, word, and deed, everything came from a place of divine wisdom? This spiritual community can be the one that creates the shift. I know that. I know that. Divine wisdom is our guide in all that we think, say, and do. Wisdom. It simply shines as a light from within that illumines the way and reveals whatever needs to be shown at a particular time. The divine in me greets the divine in you, whispers words of wisdom, and we act from that knowing. And so it is. God bless you all.
there's just one power, there's just one light shining in the world like a beacon in the night. There is just one power we all can share, one great power everywhere. One great power, one great love, big as the ocean and the skies up above. One great spirit waiting in prayer, one great power everywhere. One great power everywhere. There is just one purpose, there is just one spark Burning in our souls like a candle in the dark There is just one chorus we all can sing One great power let it ring One great power, one great love Big as the ocean and the skies up above One great spirit waiting in prayer One great power everywhere One great power everywhere One great power 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 power one great 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 power everywhere there is just one presence there is just one light shining in the world like a beacon in the night there is just one power we all can share one great power everywhere one great power one great love big as the ocean and the skies up above one great spirit waiting in prayer one great power everywhere one great power everywhere one great power Thank you. Am I the only one to one that wanted to do that at the end? <laughs> That's how I felt. Thank you, team. Oh, one great power. Aren't we blessed to know that? One great power. Thank you, God. So it's that time in our service where we have the opportunity to share our gifts and our tithes. And in whatever way you're sharing with us, we want you to know we are so grateful. So I invite you, if you choose, to infuse your tithe, your gift, with whatever energy you would like it to be. Whether it's love, wisdom, peace, understanding, whatever. We take all of that energy and we gratefully send it out to the world. Join me in our affirmation of abundance, please. Divine love, through me, blesses and multiplies all that I am, all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. Thank you, God, and it is so. We have a couple of cards to add to our wall. Beautiful, colorful, springtime colors coming out. It says, Dear Unity Family, thank you for all that you do. Reverend Teresa, you are off to a wonderful start. Thank you for that affirmation. I appreciate that, <laughs> and I appreciate the love that you're sharing with this community. And here's another one that says, grateful and blessed, grateful and blessed. Thank you so much. Love and blessings to all. And again, we thank you all so much for all the love and the support that you're sharing with us all this time throughout this whole year. Believe it or not, friends, we're coming up upon a year, aren't we? That's okay. You hold that good energy. Divine wisdom is what's making the choices here, and you know that we are Coming out the other side, stronger, healthier than ever before. We're very, very close. You hang in there with us. Practice and keep sending all that love to us, and we're going to send it all right back out to you. We are so grateful. So if you'll join me one more time in prayer, in our prayer for protection. Say it with some enthusiasm. I like that if you choose. It could be prayerful and contemplative as well. But the light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. 
The power of God protects us. The presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is, and all is well. Thank you all so much for being present with us this day. Mr. Ken and the music team, take us home with the peace song. That was meant to be With God our Creator We are family Let us walk with each other In perfect harmony Let peace begin with me Let this be the moment now with every step I take, let this be my solemn vow To take each moment and live each moment in peace eternally Let there be peace on earth and let it begin